Churchill had dismissed India's experiment with self-governance. Why? Because India is socially diverse. 22 languages, 20,000 dialects, numerous religions, numerous regions. Churchill said, India is merely a geographical expression. It is no more a single country than the equator. He was convinced that independent India won't be able to stay together. Well, Churchill was wrong. India remains united and grows stronger. Its success as a secular state has surprised many. Thomas Babington, or Lord Macaulay as you would know him today, brought English education to India. His purpose was to hammer in the inferiority complex. They introduced an education system that hailed the British as superior in science, arts, even morals. On the 2nd of February, 1835, Macaulay circulated his minute on education. He declared, a single shelf of a good European library was worth the whole native literature of India and Arabia. Quick fact check. The Mahabharata is lengthier than Homer's Iliad and Odyssey combined. The Mahabharata has more than 200,000 lines. Iliad and Odyssey have 30,000 lines each. The Ramayana too is three times as large as Iliad. Anyhow, Macaulay did not hesitate in selling lies or spelling out his design. Take India, for instance. It was colonized for two centuries by the United Kingdom. And this was colonialism in its most predatory form. The British looted everyone and everything. In today's value, this loot would amount to a sum of $45 trillion. This is according to research by Columbia University Press. It says Britain drained a total of $45 trillion from India. Shouldn't the UK pay reparations for this? Forget reparations. The least it can do is return India's stolen artifacts, like the Kohinoor, one of the most precious diamonds in the world. This diamond was mined at the Kulur mine in India. It was unfairly ceded to Queen Victoria when Britain annexed Punjab in 1849. Today it adorns Queen Elizabeth's crown. Another priceless artifact is Maharaja Ranjit Singh's throne. It's covered with sheets of engraved gold. After the Anglo-Sikh war, it was moved to the Albert Museum. It's been in Britain ever since. Just like the sandstone idol of Lord Harihara from Madhya Pradesh. This 500 kg copper Buddha from Bihar. The sword of Tipu Sultan. Their artifacts belong to the countries of their origin, to places where they can best be appreciated, to people for whom they have the most meaning. So by holding on to them and displaying them for a fee, Western museums are still benefiting from their colonial legacy, still validating their historical wrongs and injustices. Their empires have crumbled, but their sense of entitlement has not. The history that is taught in Indian schools is not Indian history at all. It is India through the lens of Britain. Do you know that Imperial England used history as a tool for suppressing Indians? In 1868, Max Muller, the famous Indologist, wrote a letter to the Duke of Argyle. He was the then Secretary of State of India, and these words are from Mueller's letter. I'm quoting, India has been conquered once, but India must be conquered again, and the second conquest should be a conquest by education. The British custom-made Indian history to suit their purpose. We were taught that it was the invasion of Alexander that civilized us. The Shakas and the Kushans were good for the natives. The invasion of Muhammad bin Qasim, the Ghoris, the Tughlaqs, the Lodhis, the Mughals, they were all good for India. Akbar was great. What about Raja Man Singh? He was the Rajput commander of Akbar's armies. He helped Akbar the Great extend his empire. Why aren't we studying Raja Man Singh enough? Because he's an Indian and the British were not comfortable endorsing him. Now here is a question. Why are our history books still so selective? Our books mention Newton but conveniently shrink passages on the 6th century mathematician Brahmagupta. Indians are not taught that it was one of their own who first developed numericals 1 to 9 and 0. Our history books have no mention of Vedic maths and how it inspired the world, or how the world learnt from the Hindu agricultural practices, how ancient India was the world's most favoured trading nation. Here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting. Oh my God, Palki Sharma's videos, her outstanding way of presenting things, her nationalist tone, 
that slams the Brits without even raising her voice is priceless. Whether be it gravitas or vantage, Palki Sharma Upadhyay has risen above the shows that she hosts because she is a brand name herself, an Indian brand. That's symbolic of patriotism, devotion to one's own country and the most important thing, putting forward the Indian perspective. And even after this, it isn't that she's only loved by the Indians. It needs to be acknowledged that Palki has viewers from across the globe. I saw a comment from a foreigner that reads, The only news I will watch. Good work and keep it up. Palki is my female crush, honestly. If given an option, I would have gone on a date with her today. That's on Valentine's Day. And I would have asked her about her affair with the choicest words, finest expressions and mellifluous tone. Her voice is so pleasing to ears. Euphonious, mellow, honeyed, dulcet. You know, I've said this in the past and I'll repeat this again. News is more worthy when presented by Palki. She respects her viewers without influencing them with fake news. She is undoubtedly one of the most talented journalists in the world. She has continued to protect and project journalism. You look at the comment section of any of her videos and you'll find her viewers praising her. And not only her, even the broadcast of her show. And you know, why is she so much respected? Because there's absolutely no such channel showing both sides of the coin. But this talented lady always represents both sides. And the best part of her news delivery is the way of her explanation. So lucid, limpid and easy to understand. Backed with quotes, figures, statistics. She's just not like others. You know, I will refrain myself from taking names, but unfortunately, what people are doing in the name of journalism is farce. And amidst the noisy mockery of news on several other channels, thankfully, the Almighty has blessed us with her beautifully articulated news delivery. I feel blessed as an Indian to have her because... She is the one who still instills our faith in the fourth pillar of democracy. You should watch her interview with Parvez Musharraf. I have created a dedicated video on that. Please go and watch that. I tell you, I had watched the interview a few years back, just when I was out of my high school. That was the day when I realized that you can put forward your points with precision even in front of your hostile neighbours, without being rude or even raising your voice. I really wish India understands the importance of great news delivery. Unfortunately, media has stooped to a new low and has successfully influenced people to be polarised. But you know, not everything has to be seen with the tint of right and left. We'll surely discuss this in some other video. If discussed now, the duration of the video will exceed. Palki has revolutionized the society with her news. And her impact could be felt when she left Vion and her famous show Gravitas. Her viewers across the globe were yearning for her return. And she admitted this on her podcast with Smita Prakash. Palki said, Every time I put a photo on Instagram, people ask, this is fine, but when will the show be on air? She further added, which is nice, but I want to tell you and everyone else that I'll be back and it will be a better show, hopefully. And I want to do the show when I'm ready, when I know it's going to work. And Palki returned with a new show, Vantage, on First Post. On the Republic Day of India. And she's back with her independent, unbiased, balanced journalism, garnished with more vigor and charisma now. She is truly a blessing for India. I would love to end the video by showing this beautiful comment from someone from Vietnam. Palki is just not a journalist. 
she is an indian who is making foreigners fall in love with india and love and know india a little more every day well this was it from my end if you like the video consider liking it and sharing it among your friends to help the channel grow and it's a humble request consider subscribing the channel too i would love to know your view points regarding this video so please drop in your comments in the comment section below till then goodbye jai hind